um, to upgrade. You got to make sure you got all the equipment, all the things that Nurse Tammy would need. Hey, everybody. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to another exciting episode of Meet Them. I'm your host, Troy Rawlings. And today we talk to, uh, well, I usually don't try to date the interviews. I usually don't try to date everything. I like to keep it generic so that whenever you watch it, it stays relevant and all that great stuff. But we're in a different time now. So this month is April 2020. And if, you've, if, if you're around anywhere in the world, you know that the pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19, has caused pandemonium and panic everywhere. And we got some frontline people that are doing amazing work, scientists, doctors, nurses, around the clock, uh, to not only come up with the best possible vaccine for the virus, it's a virus, um, so, but also treat people. Treat people, and, and these folks were already working, treating people as it was, and then, you know, um, to give some perspective, a close friend of mine for years, she is my sister, we've known each other for years, and she's, I say, she's versed better than some doctors. I know some doctors somewhere are like, oh, how could you say that? This sister is just amazing. And from the spiritual aspect, holistic aspect, and being a medical professional for four decades, I always turn to Nurse Tammy. So today is Meet the Nurse, Nurse Tammy. What's going on? Tammy Ruth. Good son. afternoon. That's me. How you doing, sir? Good day. Um, it's good to see you. Uh, good to see you, too. I'm glad I caught up to you. I'm glad we, uh, well, we always talking. But um, yeah. such a time as this. Uh, you're a go-to, have been a go-to for years for yes, many sir. people to talk to, to interact with, to um, seek for not only spiritual counsel, but mm -hmm. real practical counsel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You've been, uh, you were a nurse for how long? Um, for about 37 years. 37 well, years. Well, no, 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 just about 41 years. I'm sorry. I was, um, I had been a nurse for five years when I had my first kid and she's 36. So that makes it 41 years. 41 <laughs> years. Now, now a lot of little girls, you know, I always ask my daughter what she wants to be. And she always says scientist. Now she's at an actress, singer, mm -hmm. uh, I said, you can be all that. Remember, you read the book right. on major. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, teacher, ballerina, mm -hmm. doctor, astronaut. Uh, when did you know you wanted to be in in the field of medicine or nursing? When did that fascinate you? How old were you? <laughs> um, in my earliest Christmas pictures, uh, I was always in a nurse's cap with a fake stethoscope, uh, candy pills and whatnot and so forth. Um, <laughs> and really, and it stuck with me. And I always wanted to be a nurse. Um, when I was uh, 13, uh, the physician that delivered me from my mother began to give me all his Journal of American Medicine magazines, and I began to read them voraciously. And by that time, I could quote the circulation of the heart from the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, <laughs> through the heart, out through the lungs and back down, because I was just there. I just loved it. So all of, of my life, I'm one of the most fortunate people that I know because um, I do what I love. I love what I do, and I get paid for it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And and you also, like you said, you were what, you said fifteen. You started reading those medical books. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. So, and you're an avid reader. We talked about this before. You're an avid reader. Yeah. Yeah. And what fascinated you the most while you were young? What fascinated you the most about medicine, about about biology, human body? Oh. Well, um, now understand, uh, when I was four, five, and six years old, even on TV, I didn't have people that looked like me that were mm -hmm. nurses, okay? But I knew I liked to help people, but I also wanted to know why what I did helped, okay? And so I was always getting in trouble for tearing stuff up. I was not the one that dissected the frog or anything like that, never, ever, thank you. But... Um, I, I, I always wanted to help, but I wanted to know why what I did, whatever intervention I did, I wanted to know why it worked. And so that's where it came in. I did not ever want to be a doctor. I always wanted to be a nurse. 
and over the years, it's it's funny because um, uh, you're from where are you where are you from originally? Maryland. I'm still, you are from Maryland. Uh, I am from Maryland, absolutely, and uh, I, I'm from a small town, uh, Chestertown. And uh, as as a matter of fact, it's so small that they're going to close our hospital uh, later this year or early 2021 because it's just so small. Enough, you don't get enough patients. <laughs> well. Um, it was bought out by um, a large group of hospitals that have umbrellaed all up and down uh, the region where I live. Uh, they're based in Baltimore City. And so they've kind of imminently kind of domained all of this stuff. So um, mm -hmm. it was, you know, really a big deal to see the culture change for some of the nurses that lived in Baltimore City to move to my small town because they were still used to suspecting people of being drug users and drug seeking and this and that. And they came down here and it was just good old people, just nice folks. Mm. And I had a chance to work with them before I moved to the large city. And um, I had never lost the fire in my belly for nursing. Never, never. Once I became a nurse, I was off to the races for real. I love it. So, all right, let's, let's come to present day. COVID-19. Okay. coronavirus uh for the people who don't know and people are confused and scared and and they're hearing all this different news what exactly is the coronavirus over 19. okay the it's named what it is because of more than likely where it came from and how it was studied and it could be the there there may be a COVID 14 out there but it it's nothing. There could be a COVID-29 out there, but it's nothing. But COVID-19 proved to be the one that could prove most harmful. And um, it's been around for years. If you look on old Lysol cans, it's, it's on there that Lysol will kill the COVID-19 virus. Uh, but it had become encapsulated in an area to the point where it started out as an epidemic. And because we are global travelers, that's why it became a pandemic. And it is an organism that attacks the respiratory system. And that's how, in many cases, it ultimately takes you out because it, it shuts down your, your respiratory system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is wise. It is wise if you're leaving home for, any, for anything. And if you're going to come in contact with people other than who you live with, you better mask and glove change gloves between stores. It's not cool just to put on a pair of gloves and go out of the house. Ch take the gloves off before you get back in the vehicle because then you're transporting what you brought out of the store onto your steering wheel. You're going to be touching the steering wheel and so forth. So if you, if you need to, keep your hands ungloved until you get out of the vehicle. Get out of the vehicle, put the gloves on. Just before you get back in the vehicle, take them off because otherwise you're transporting it. Do not wear the same shoes in the house that you've worn out because uh, it's, it's apparently an airborne infection, okay? It's a virus as it cannot be contained. And if someone is coughing, and unfortunately there are still people that are coughing and not covering the cough and just coughing it into your arm and into your your elbow area is not enough anymore. You got to put that thing down your own shirt. <laughs> right. okay, really? Yeah. You know, the great yeah. thing about the great thing about this is a great thing about this. <laughs> the great thing about this is that I have an eight year old daughter. Love mm -hmm. her. To be, but I'm always mm -hmm. like, you only been in there for two seconds washing your hands. You got to wash your hands. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, the cooking background and everything and from being mm -hmm. barbering, everything I did customer service wise, we washed our hands tremendously. Right. And so all the things I've been telling Zoe to do, I'm like, see, you know, take cough. And it, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it seems basic. It seems like we're going mm -hmm. back to basics. Um, so what you're saying in a nutshell is like they said, it's a reason to stay, stay home. Um, I've, I've understood the whole thing of flattening the curb. Will, Will Smith broke it down beautifully. Just the fact of, you know, when there's so much rush of panic like this, anything I remember, mm -hmm. 9-11 happened. You had a lot of people going to the psychiatrist like never before and in the emergency room, even though no the stress was causing their heart to palpitate. They're going to the emergency room. It's overcrowded just from the, the stress of it all. Um, so 
what can what do you suggest? Well, obviously, if you don't have to go out for anything essential, stay mm-hmm. home. One. Mm-hmm. Um, two, I remember Nancy Messonnet on uh, March 14, 2020, saying that mm-hmm. everyone was going to be exposed to this. It's a virus. It's an atmosphere. Okay. Everyone probably will be exposed to it. Okay. Um, the majority of people will, if you do get sick, you'll be able to ride it out at home. Um, mm-hmm. Depending on, now she said this on the 14th for a lot of things. She looked tired mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. Look, y'all, y'all keep calling me. Uh, she said, <laughs> stop ringing my phone. This is what's going down. You're going to catch it. Please. Yeah. <laughs> um, but have you ever in your lifetime, you're not much older than me, but in your lifetime, have you ever seen anything quite like this? Have we had anything in this in, in, since the, well, since the 60s okay. to now? Um. Okay, well, we have to think about the way families then, okay? Um, Understand 50s, 60s, 70s, you had almost three generations living in one household, okay? Mm. So you may have had a grandparent living with you that had been exposed to TB. Right, right. Okay, and tuberculosis is a droplet infection, as in you cough it out, and it forms a droplet as it comes out of your lungs and the disease is encapsulated in it. And the kids didn't get it, but the grandchildren got it because the grandchildren were on the floor around their legs and whatnot and so forth. And they were exposed to these droplet infection. Okay. So the kids may, may have been kind of, an, the, the grandparent had the disease. The kids may have been exposed to it, but the grandchildren got the disease. Wow. Wow. So yeah. it, it, uh, I mean, I remember chicken pox when it was a normal thing. You don't really don't hear about kids getting chicken pox anymore. Because I had we're immunizing. Because we're immunizing. Right. We're immunizing. But understand, before tuberculosis was called tuberculosis, it was called the consumption. Mm. Because it tore up your whole body. You, you were, you begin to lose weight. You were coughing, sweating, you know, the, the whole deal with it. And so it has been there, but, um, eventually we got smarter and we found ways. No, you can't inoculate against uh, TB, but there is a test for TB and you can get treated with uh, two different drugs that will render it harmless to you. Okay. See, and so I believe that, of course, before this gets so, so much better, it's probably going to get a little bit worse. Okay. Because there's such a thing as like um, a herd immunity where you allow the herd to get it so that they can build up antibodies and fight it. Okay, right. so right. people who are surviving the coronavirus are now almost like, uh, Immune to can it. we That's what... sample your blood so we can see what you got and we could possibly make a vaccine and blah, 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 blah. I don't know how well that's going to work, but we'll see. Yeah, Idris Elba mentioned that the, the doctor, you know, he mentioned it and of course TMZ ran with it, but he mentioned the doctor said to him, he was like, you now you probably won't ever get it again in life. You'll be immune to it. And he was like, what? He was like, because you yeah. have it. Right. Yep. Um, uh, Chris Como, is it? Who's Chris Como, the, the broadcaster who Andrew Como's mm-hmm. brother has it and some other people they mentioned has it. But mm-hmm. I just remember Nancy, Nancy Messonnier's face. It, it almost felt like that aunt or that mother said, look, you won't get it. Okay. <laughs> you won't be exposed to it. Okay. But, and I think the nature of it is, I, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you break down with the nature of, uh, uh, cause I, I, I totally, I totally, I didn't know how TB was passed along, but I remember, you know, I know you got the TB tests and mm-hmm. you test your skin and right. it's a normal, all of a sudden it becomes a normalcy right. and you forget, you know, when the last time somebody like, uh, Dave Chappelle was joking about it. He said, when the last time somebody died of polio, you know, exactly. Uh, he said diarrhea used to take people out. He said, you get diarrhea, you, you was a goner. <laughs> it, it was called the dysentery. Right, right, the dysentery. Right. Yeah, right. Um, now, uh, let me touch back on uh, chicken pox. If, if a mom had a group of kids and one of them came down with chicken pox, they allowed all the rest of them to be exposed to it, okay? Right, Everybody right. get it, so won't nobody ever get it again. You used and to bring people over the house. Deal, oh, so I got they could pox? be exposed to it. Mm. Who got chicken pox? Shut them down here. You know, but um, it was 
Now, nobody realized how wise that was. Because as you become older, if you have not had the chicken pox, become you're single. probably going to come through with the shingles. And the shingles are a lot. Oh, my God. It's a lot. It's, it's, it hurts. It's painful. And, some, and, and the mere fact that you're breaking down the first line of defense, which is the skin, okay? Mm. The mere fact that you're breaking that down. And if you're older, you're more susceptible because a lot of times, well, we, we are getting a, a smarter and stronger American or a race of people now. You have people 82 years old swimming laps every day. Uh, the uh, physician that's under fire right now uh, he only runs three and a half miles a day, but he's he's seventy nine years old. Okay, the uh, the the fellow that wrote the article on him said he used to run seven miles a day, would work sixteen hours a day because he first uh, kind of identified that gay men were dying of pneumocystic pneumonia, which is usually the last disease that AIDS victims get that will really take them out. Okay, now getting back to 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 what you were saying. Um, uh, with, you're probably going to get it. You probably do. And the scary part of it is, and it, and it, and it could also be a blessing with people taking precautions adequately. Okay. It's not going to be a sledgehammer anymore. Okay. Mm. Right now it's a wrecking ball through our homes. Okay. But I think that as we are more cautious and we're smart about how we're moving, um, older folks go to the markets earlier in the morning before the young folks get up right? because you're more cautious. They're a little bit more. It's not going to happen to me. They're invincible. Okay. Right. So older folks get up in the morning, seven thirty, eight o'clock, be in the market, get in and get out. When like they used to do back in the day. It was, it was, it was funny. Oh my God. Yes. We don't think about, we just, we just realize this, this basic stuff. I remember we talk about Virginia waking up and you know, you hear, God, like, oh, let me see what's okay. Oh. Coming too. My big mom was up before the dog already going to be up, and you already oh. started all that noise out there, right? right. <laughs> um, but see, that's where um, we and please forgive me if I sound so Afrocentric, but we learned so much mother wit stuff that they passed down. Some of it was old wise tales, true, right? You stay upstairs nine days after you had the baby, okay. But there was stuff that they passed down just, and, and some of them didn't know why. And that's the part that made me crazy. We didn't know why we did stuff, but they would just pass it down the, the way you would do certain things. You wouldn't cut your hair at a certain time. You wouldn't wash your hair, blah, 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 blah. Some of it's old wives' tale, but some of it is that, that good horror sense that you kind of need to have at the ready. And some of it, um, I remember when my eldest child was like nine months old, and she would cough in her sleep and she would cover her mouth while she was asleep coughing because I had drilled it in her to cover her mouth when she coughed. And she's 36 mm -hmm. years old. Okay, so it's kind of stuff. This, for real, the world has stopped, okay? And so mm -hmm. this is a chance for parents to pour in. Parents, uh, my uh, brother and I were talking the other day and we were going to talk about teaching our grandchildren to cook. Because fast food's not always going to be available. You teach them how to cook. Now, now, guess what? The fun thing is they're making healthy foods taste good. Yes. Okay? Everything does not taste like uh, cut up cardboard, okay, anymore. Right. They're, I mean, and now, now understand, I'm still, I'm a product of a generation where if it didn't have gravy and a biscuit, then you ain't serving dinner yet. Right. You know? Uh, right. Okay, but now we're Got learning. Four starches. A meat with starch on it, and exactly, exactly, <laughs> and um, and that was because you had enough of it, and it went far because they had larger families. Well, now we have smaller families, okay, and but now that we're still, now that we're sitting still, mm -hmm. yeah, you have a chance to pour into them. You have a chance to soak them with some stuff, train them how to clean the house right for real. No, the little Zumba thing is not going to always get that corner the way I want it to. Them baseboards need to be gotten to. I mean, those kind of things. Um, Tell them stuff like get on your knees with some, uh, We, you know, we'd be like, oh, bleach is not. Honey, <laughs> honey, bleach would be singing in our house. You hear me? Good Lord, it's a wonder we didn't die of upper respiratory disorders. <laughs> 
I, mom's I, already up. We can smell the bleach, you know. I just, um, I just, I just, uh, <laughs> just got into a new place. We got contractors doing the stuff, and I go to clean the bathroom because you got contractors, and you know how to use the bathroom. So I go in there, and I'm bleach. And Zoe's like, it smells like bleach. I said, it smells like life. It smells <laughs> like purity. <laughs> take it all in. She's like, okay. That that's exactly. Yeah. But 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 I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but after a while, yeah. you you do get used to it. But um, you learn ways to protect your environment. Okay. Mm. Um, you you learn to you have to learn how to be savvy, tech savvy. You've got to be tech savvy now because you don't have the ability to do a lot of stuff anymore. And you have organizations that have been set up just to be able to serve you, which kind of blows my mind that we have a shortage of masks and <laughs> protective devices and whatnot that are uh, for, available freedom, for us. Freedom paper. Excuse no. me. <laughs> I said, let alone toilet paper. Shout out to Freedom Paper. <sighs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, here's, here's one. Th uh, also, I want to hit on this before we get out. You we know, we can talk for, for hours, literally. Yeah. But, um, Coming up, was there always the fear of God or um, were you always taught to have a relationship with God coming up? How did, how did you come up as far as, because you, you have a great way. And for those that don't know, uh, Nurse Tammy or Tammy Rufusanda, her information will be below. Um, she's getting her website revamped, redone. But um, you speak, you're a minister, you consult, and I love the fact that you balance practicality and, and natural knowledge of the body, biology, and, and, uh, and treatments, and all the stuff you have knowledge of from your years of nursing, mm -hmm. a spiritual sense, and a God base. How did, where did that start? Where did the God base start? Okay, well, my parents were saved. They gave their lives to Jesus Christ before I was born. Okay. And... Um, so I grew up in a Pentecostal household, which was a lot of rules. Um, it didn't really speak to relationship. The God that I knew growing up was the God that if you step off of the white line, you, he's going to blow that foot off. And so um, I was pretty nervous, you know, about that. And sometimes I felt like I... I, I I couldn't do right because I was a cut up. I was a I was one of those kind of chicks, okay? And um it wasn't until 1997 when I got invited. Now, being a kid, my mother was a pastor. Hello. Ugh. Um, you get saved <laughs> at every youth convention every year, okay? Oh, hallelujah, all that. Okay, good. But it wasn't until um I was about 36 or 37 that I was introduced to a loving, caring, and a forgiving God. And I believe that I grew up in church, but church didn't grow up in me until I was sure enough grown up. I had all my children by then. And, um, and, and I learned that he needed a woman like me. He needed a fun girl like me. He needed a chick that if it wasn't a party, you give her 30 minutes at the telephone and you got a party. He needed this, this kind of girl because I'm assigned to certain individuals. There are certain people that I can talk to that you might never get in touch with. You could you could never reach them. Um, and I that became bigger and bigger and bigger for me. And um, it was it's it, it's it's funny because being a nurse, it was it's been a female based profession primarily. And I couldn't stand females. Mm. OK, but it was until I really honest to God gave my life to Christ that I began to understand that there are women waiting to hear from a woman like me. I never wanted children, never. I was gonna be the perfect aunt, big old house, call them for the summer, send them back home. And uh, it, it was until I heard my first child's cry that I, f I, I was scared to love her because I was so self-centered, I was so selfish. And so once I heard her cry, the love mm. just just rushed me. And as I began to get in relationship with God through Jesus Christ, I felt how he feels about us. He hears our faintest cry. He hears. There are, there are moms that can go by a nursery, and if their baby's not crying, their milk won't let down. 
But if their baby's crying, you see women standing outside of a nursery with 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 a wet bra on because they can hear their babies cry. That is so wild. And I didn't notice it until I worked in the hospital. I couldn't really do kids, but I, I worked in the hospital and I saw that happen. When her baby started crying, her letdown came and she started lactating. That's amazing to me. So um, at first it was hard for me to get saved, saved for real, because I knew disease in its process. And I knew how people got sick and I knew how they got well. And so you're going to talk to me about this nebulous person, okay, who I couldn't see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. And you want me to surrender my life to him. Mm. Okay. I was a nurse. I was a good nurse. Um, I knew how disease and process went, and I knew how people got healed, and I knew how blah, 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 blah. But it came to a point where I had to really, really try him. And I've seen it at bedsides. I've seen it in, in my personal life. When my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, I, 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 I got her pathology report and I blew it up. I made it larger, okay, almost, almost poster size. And I began to write healing scriptures between each line. And so the three months that they originally gave her, God turned them into three years. And I know it was only God that could have done that because the type of cancer was an aggressive cancer that she had. So, um, yes, from childhood, I knew about God. I knew about church. But the real relationship started when I was about 36, 37 years old. Now, and I, and I wanted to touch on that. We've known each other for years, so we know mm -hmm. all the ins and outs. But um, yeah, actually, some things I've learned even in this. And... Um, and before we get out of here, um, why is it important now at this time where I, I'm, I'm heavy on pushing consultants? Why is it important mm -hmm. for someone to have a nurse consultant like Nurse Tammy that they okay. can pick up the phone and call? I okay. know. <laughs> okay. But why, for the person that doesn't know why it's key to have a, a um, nurse the, consultant. Uh, the biggest thing that, that really jumps out at me uh, was in 2005. I had a godson who was in a car accident and his mother called me from New Jersey and asked me would I go to the hospital and see what was going on. Mm. So I drove some 90 miles from my house to get to the hospital and what I, I saw took the bottom out of me. Okay. But I had to put on the nurse hat and not just the godmother hat and not just the friend hat because when she was driving from New Jersey, the only thing I could say to her is, yes, you do need to come and you need to come as quickly as possible, okay? And uh, there was um, an emergency room physician that I had worked with um, at the Crawley Shock Trauma Center in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And I had worked with this physician up close uh, and personal at, at another hospital anyway, but he saw my face. And he knew me for how I would um, kind of be a liaison between nurse and uh, between doctor and patient. And so when the family had gathered, I was in the room with them and he would speak and say and speak how doctors speak. And everybody in the room would look at me. And I would, <laughs> exactly. And so I would recant what he said in words that they could understand. Then they'd look back at the physician. And he'd say some more stuff and they'd look back at me. And that thing, I was not frightened because mm -hmm. I knew what I was talking about. Um, I knew the horror of what he was saying was happening to this young man, my godson, but I was fully nursed at that time. And so what we ended with is we see what we see, but there's still God who has the final say so. And some people might find that it's crazy and whatnot and so forth. And if the person dies anyway, well, I thought you said if we prayed, ah, 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 ah. One of the things I've learned early is to pray, Lord, let your will be done and help us to accept it. Because a lot of times we don't get the closure. A lot of times we don't get to tie it up in a neat little bow and slide it under the Christmas tree. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes life deals you something and you're blindsided, T-bones and everything else. And you've just got to find, find a way to put it away. I've found that the more I give it to God, I'm better. But once I saw that 
And uh, then the types of positions that I was taking, one of the positions that I that I was was um, was what you call an MDS coordinator. And that helps long term care facilities to get all the money off the table that <laughs> CMS, uh, Medicare and Medicaid will pay, will reimburse for services provided. And I mm. made sure that we got as many pennies off the table as we possibly could. But in the meantime, I had to teach staff how to make sure that we do it, document what you're doing. And so, so that, that, that was another facet of, look, take credit for what you're doing, okay? Right. So with all of that, then I begin to see families having to make tough decisions. Should mm. I leave mom or dad in this nursing home? And then I said, uh, well, you're gonna have to expose all their assets. Well, they ain't got nothing where you'll live at. Oh, we stay in Big Mama's house. Well, get ready to move because they're going to take that to pay for her care. Mm. What? Why? Well, I'll just put it in somebody else's name. It has to be in somebody else's name X number of years before they go into long-term care. So it's not like as soon as she gets in long-term care, you can switch it over. Nope. It has to be done a certain number of years in advance to the long-term care placement. Anyway, but... um. Being, being, being the middleman, and this mm. stems from all the way back from childhood because I was a middle child. <laughs> I, I, had, I had four siblings, two older and two younger of each. One older, one older brother and sister, one younger brother and sister. And I was truly the middle child, fighting for attention, knew everything, had the dirt on everybody. And so fortunately, I was able to use that professionally and, um, and ministerially. Okay. Now, um, thank you so much, sis, for taking time. Like I said, we could we can rock and roll for a while. Right. Um, how can people get in touch with you if uh, they want to get your consulting and um, have you on call? You know, you got prepaid legal, you got Nurse Tammy. Okay, <laughs> so, um, well, I do have nursetammy.com. Uh, and then um, I just have a new page, yeah, uh, Nurse Tammy R at yahoo.com. So okay. those are the two Nurse um, Tammy emails. R. Nurse Tammy R at yahoo.com and uh, nurse Tammy.com is you know my domain. So you can send me those, uh, send me, you know, emails. And um I, I I'm not really set up taking phone calls yet, but sometimes on a case by case I will do if I really feel like I need to talk to you so that you can hear my heart in what I'm saying to you or, you know, where we're, where we're going, or if you need more than just a little 15 minute groove. Okay. So um, I will make myself available in worldwide. certain cases. And you offer worldwide Skype situations if it's really one-on-ones like this. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, absolutely. Person. And Skype. Right. right. All right. So we're trying to get I, it, trying to get it down with the get down, you know, the tech technology. You have to be tech savvy. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. What, uh, what what word do you have for people before we get out of here for folks that are um because you know um uh this is you know, I say it all the time this is the time for us that that have a light to shine that we shine it and um and we really uplift what what words of uplifting hopeful words can you give to the people that may be watching um, this now? One of the things that kind of jumps out at me is that he knows your name. God knows your name. You're not just a number. Um, please complete the census because that helps. That helps deliver services to to communities. But God knows your name. Um, yeah, He's just that much God that He knows your name, and He's not going to leave you. He's not going to. And and even if it's just having your neighbor wave out the window to you every now and then, but God knows your name. He knows your needs. He knows what your cry sounds like. So don't be afraid to do that. And God will send people like me. Hmm. That's the first time I ever said that out loud. But he'll send people like me to kind of hold your hand, socially distant, but hold your hand and walk you through stuff so that this, this, this gorilla turns into a little chimpanzee. Okay? You're not by yourself. You're not. You're not alone. He knows your name. Thank you, Nurse Tammy. Tammy Ruth Saunders, y'all. You'll be hearing more from her. Check her out. NurseTammy.com, um, site's under development, but 
it'll be up soon and yeah. i'll have all information below how you can get in touch with nurse tammy uh thank you tammy love you i love you too sir thank you talk to you soon <laughs> bye-bye now